What's up guys? I haven't done a video in a while. Been doing a lot of work at the new homestead. I wanted to just take a minute and break out of doing all this work to show off this uh, wheeled excavator I have. I've had this thing for about five years now. I bought it on Craigslist um, a while back for, I think it was like around $8,000 or $8,800. Um, it only had 900 and some hours on it. And it's a Komatsu PW30. It's a wheeled excavator and it has a thumb on it, hydraulic thumb. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show this off because there are very few videos on these things. Um, and they're all from other countries because these things are popular in Europe. They're not really big in the US. So uh, you don't really see them much around here. It's a pretty nice little machine. It's got about, I think it's like 28 horsepower or um, roughly. On the motor and a little a little diesel Komatsu diesel engine. So they're all made in Japan, and I believe it's like 1990s, uh, maybe early 90s. I'm not really sure of the exact year, um, but I, I wanted to do a video on, you know, wheeled excavator versus a tracked excavator because I also have a tracked one, and I'll get another video on that. But this thing is nice because with the wheeled ones they go pretty fast so you can drive them down the roads um i think this one probably does like 15 miles per hour maybe 20. um <laughs> I, it's a little loose because if you're going up a hill this thing really dogs out and i might just be because of the age and the hydraulic system and stuff like that but um going down a hill this thing flies going from place to place if you have nice roads and stuff these things are great if you have to go down into muddy boggy areas these things are terrible because they have so much pressure on the wheels that they sink very quickly um, and they get stuck pretty pretty easy so they're they're mainly made for roads one really nice thing about this excavator is it's got an offset boom on it so it's this cylinder here that pushes the boom um, so you can get right along the side of a of a building or something if you're doing uh, digging along a foundation this doesn't have a zero swing on the back but it's a pretty pretty tight swing so i'll i'll go through everything um, show some footage of this thing operating but today what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this thing to go pick up some scrap metal that we're loading onto a trailer to, to take to a scrap metal um, yard this thumb job here was i think a diy um and even the fittings aren't the appropriate ones i think they're probably the galvanized and they should be the hydraulic but it seems to work okay haven't had any blowouts yet I, I would like to change out all these fittings i've got i've got them i just haven't gotten around to doing it with the real hydraulic ones and not um, galvanized pipe fittings so got a little 18 inch bucket with teeth i've got this little flap extender for it so you can pick up more dirt when you're doing loose dirt this thumb is super heavy duty it's probably inch thick steel all around and um, it does a pretty good job there's a little electric truck so let's take a look at the controls on this thing they are different than a tracked excavator because the main difference is you have a steering wheel um, and going forward and backwards drives a lot like a tractor so you've got this like shuttle shift here where you know you push it forward to go forward and you pull it backwards to go backwards so there's no foot pedals for going forward and backwards um, so that's a big difference so you, these things are really kind of designed to just drive park and then dig they're not really um, great for moving around while you're digging and picking up things and stuff like that the control sticks are iso so that's kind of nice on this thing and everything's manual lockout for safety so if you don't want any of uh in these sticks to move you lock them out by pushing these little flippers um so then it keeps keeps these things from going anywhere okay so to start this thing you just make sure you have it in neutral and then uh this this lever here is the throttle and you kind of put it in the middle that's like your choke um if it's cold you turn the key left 
um, to heat it up and you let it go uh, light the glow plugs up for about 15 seconds then you can turn it over to start um, we don't usually need to do that so I just kind of turn it to the on you can hear it turn on the glow plugs there and getting the fuel pump going so I let it run for about five to ten seconds and then I um, Make sure I'm in neutral. There we go. She starts right up and dies. I think I need to give it a little bit more gas here. This is my problem. I had this thing turned off. I think it needs to be like in that position there. Try it again. Huh. I'm having some trouble getting fuel. I don't remember which one's which. Probably that way, maybe. <laughs> Leave it up to doing a YouTube video that you forget about a simple thing like turning the fuel off. But you can see this thing runs like a top. I've never had any problems with it. That's the most problem I've ever had. So we were the first witness of that. So I forgot I turned off the fuel um, to empty out the water separator. So all right, let's let's take this thing for a spin. I'm gonna just gonna try to show off these controls here. It's a little tight. There's not a lot of good anchor points for my camera. So um, again, this is like an ISO. Uh, set up here so when I pull the stick back the arm lifts up and it controls the bucket when you turn it when you go in it comes in when you go to the right it goes out so the thumb was added on and it's this extra stick here so when you pull it it opens up and when you push it it closes so I'm in idle right now so everything's moving a little slow that's all right. And then the other stick over here swings, swings the whole machine back and forth. And then it moves this, the stick up and down. So if you push, if you push this stick up, that stick goes out. So again, just like any other excavator. So I, I do have a lot of people on the channel that aren't big, heavy equipment operators. So this is, sort of a beginner tutorial of how this thing works. Um, the other thing here is the blade on the front, your dozer blade, is controlled by this lever here. So you just pull it back to lift it up so I can start going. Now, this machine has crab steering. So when I turn the wheels, they both, they both turn, see? That's called a crab steering. So it's a little different when you're using this thing versus a tracked excavator because you can't turn on a dime. You can't do a lot of those tricks that you can do with the, the track machine as far as pushing your stick down and rotating. It's a lot harder to do this with crab steering. So like hopping over a trench or a pipe is a little bit more difficult. You can do it, but it just doesn't work quite the same. Um, and then this little red stick here is your boom offset so what that does is it just rotates the boom in place so see I've now rotated all the way over there without even rotating the whole cab up here so and I can do this the other way too it goes further in one direction than the other I'm gonna hit all that trailer there so that's the boom offset it's really nice if you need to like rotate um, and then get like along the edge of something uh, like a building You know you can kind of turn like this and Then dig along the side of the foundation so like you can see I Could dig like right along my track line there. So if I had a 
building here, like this barn, but I was closer to it. I can dig right up next to it um, without hitting it. So that's pretty cool um, to have this offset on one of these old excavators like this. So this is the throttle. Um, and this thing kind of locks your, your parking brake. And there's, you, you have a parking brake here. Um, and last thing here is the throttle, or sorry, your, the way you go forward. It's a hydrostatic transmission. And when you push this stick forward, you have three different gears, or three different speeds, four, uh, low, medium, and high. Um, and then you have two speeds in reverse. So let me get this thing kind of back on center. And fix my offset here. All right. Now we can kind of get out of here. Go down to this scrap metal pile. So we'll do first gear. It's pretty easy. I just move this lever here. <laughs> the problem with this thing is uh, the shaking this is going to be outrageous because there's uh, no good spots to hold the camera that aren't shaking like crazy. going over to that metal pile we're gonna load up this trailer right here with everything we can um, probably need multiple loads here Why does it sound like there's more than just metal in there?
<laughs> so here's the chaos. I was actually telling my father who's been out here helping that it's probably would have been nice to hand load some of this, but would have taken a lot longer. So we got it up there. We're gonna get some bolt cutters out here so we can get this barbed wire that's tangled up in everything. Um, barbed wire is really not fun to deal with when you got like wads and wads and wads of it. So we got a lot to do to clean up this metal, but the point of this video was really to just kind of show off this wheeled excavator and just kind of show you how it works. It, it does pretty well. It's a nice little excavator. Um, it's come in handy for lots of things. It's really good at ditching and trenching and things like that. Um, and so this is the first time I've used it to try to get, um, to, to pick up metal and load a trailer with. So this is my first time. Um, and yeah, hopefully I didn't do too bad.